So I guess first off, I want to ask you, in the time you've had here at LMPD, did you accomplish everything that you wanted to? I wouldn't, what I will say is we accomplished an, an amazing amount of things. And it is a testament to the men and women of this department. Um, when I came in, the department, their families were so demoralized. You could see it on their faces. Violent crime was through the roof. The city was shut down because of COVID. And when I look at now and I see the officers wanting to work, feeling good about themselves, we've got violent crime down 17%, shootings down 30%. Um, we have created a wellness unit dedicated specifically to the officers' mental and physical health. Um, we've done so many things that will position this department so down the road it can truly be a flagship department uh, for policing in the country. So the accomplishments are numerous and I'm only too happy to rattle them off. That being said, when you have the level of instability that I came into and the systems that were so broken, it, you're not going to fix these in two years. You have to, it's going to take time, um, but we are, we are on the right path. Well, and kind of going off what you mentioned about coming in and, and the officers being so demoralized, mm -hmm. you know, there's been a lot of leadership changes in recent years, you know, with an, yet another change coming. How do you think that does impact the culture and, and officer morale here? It's, it's not good. I mean, I think one of the things that you unfortunately, uh, when you police, it's really disruptive whenever there's um, a mayoral change because you, you know that there may very well be changes to the leadership of the police department. It's disruptive. Um, my concern is we've gotten things stabilized. We have, this department has momentum. There are so many things going right now. We've secured a, a new headquarters. Uh, we've got the training academy where we have civilians in there um, as the co-director of the academy writing curriculum so that we're, we're looking at our, at our teachings through a different lens. We've got our group violence intervention GVI program fully operational from the LMPD side. Our hiring is up 37 percent year to date. Uh, we've created an accountability bureau, and what that will do is that's, we're instituting a number of programs within that that will directly align with what the DOJ will be looking for when they come in, and I fully expect the consent decree. Um, we've cleared up all these backlogs and internal affairs cases and have a systems now where we're getting things pushed out in a regular cadence. There are so many things that are in motion, um, but it, for that to be successful, you need people to be showing up, engaged, and wanting to be here. And I'm, I am very concerned about the morale and where it will go. And I think that's one of the reasons it's really important to me that the narrative not be that it's business as usual, because that's factually wrong. I can, I can push back on that. At non I have endless data points, speaking points, successes to show the men and women have driven change the last two years. And for this department to be politicized so that it's a speaking point is completely unacceptable. It is not fair to the officers who are out here putting their life on the line every day. They have done such hard work. And to suggest that it's business as usual, it's just, it's just completely erroneous. Well, and so then, you know, going off of that and all these things that are in motion, the next chief coming in, what, it, what are they going to need to do? Well, I mean, my hope is, one, that they're seasoned and that they're a really strong chief because the, I am very concerned. I'm very concerned. We've not had, we're shifting and changing culture. You don't change a culture in two years, not when the systems are so widely broken as they were. And so this department could just as readily backslide. And so it's really important that there be a strong chief with integrity and who is willing to stand up for the department, but also to the incoming administration when they're being politicized. And that just goes with the nature of the beast. I mean, if, you are, if you're a quality police chief, you're not gonna be hand in step the whole way with your mayor. You just, it's, you just cannot because it's the, the relationship is such that you, you need to have the same vision and the same goals but you also need to be able to step aside and, and say, no, that's just not consistent. That's, we're being politicized. 
And so I really, I do have concerns. Um, I do have concerns because this could just as readily backslide. And what do you think the biggest factor or the biggest concern for you is when it comes to potential for backsliding? What's the biggest mistake that could be made? I think that you, my concern is the, a leadership void. If there is a leadership void, then that's how this department got to where it was. And it's just, that, that to me would be the, the biggest, the biggest heartburn, the biggest angst that I would have. Well, and obviously when you came in, Mayor Fisher, we knew he wasn't going to be running again. Mm -hmm. Was there any discussion of you staying on? Uh, with Mayor Alec Greenberg? Yes. No. He had, um, he and his team had made a decision that they were going to seek a new chief. Um, and so unfortunately there was no discussion about all of the work that had been done, the successes, where the department is. Uh, no, it was just, um, that, that, that was a decision they'd already made. Would you have wanted to stay to continue the work you've been doing? Oh, absolutely, you know, because I believe in this department, I know what we're doing is, I know we're doing great work. I, I, listen, we have more work to do. And there's always, there's areas that we have not, not done nearly enough. I will own that all day long. But for the two year span that we're, we've, we've had, the, the advancements and the stabilization that we've uh, attained, I will, I will stand on all day long. Um, and I know what is ahead of us with the DOJ coming in. And it is not something you can read a, a document and be up to speed on. It doesn't, it just doesn't work that way. And so I really had hoped that I could at least guide the department through a year or two of getting through the, what I believe will be a consent decree and the, the finalization of it and, and really just provide more stability to the infrastructure. But it's the mayor's prerogative what they want to do, so I fully respect that. Um, I just really hope that there is, there is some, a qualified individual who is sitting in the seat um, in the next few months. Right. And, you know, you mentioned how demoralized officers were when you walked in, but I feel another big issue in Louisville particularly is community relationship with police. What work have you done in that aspect during your time here, and where do you think that currently stands? Oh, absolutely. So, yes, the, the disconnect with the community, it was so dramatic, especially, quite honestly, right, in the black community. And <clears throat> you're not going to, unfortunately, you're not going to just roll out a couple of programs and get there. I think the area that we have, in a, we have not been successful in nearly enough is hiring more black officers. Now, part of it is... Part of it is just hiring police right now is incredibly difficult. Um, part of it is the systems that are in place, which includes the civil service testing that needs to be needs to be redrawn. So we have to have um, uh, we have to have a greater percentage of black officers in the police department. Um, the I, what I will say has been incredibly impactful for me and the department, and I believe the community is we created and rolled out the Police Activities League. And that is allowing us to interact with kids all the time in a non-enforcement a non capacity, whether it's through sports, cooking, outdoorsmanship, um, and also my Youth Advisory League, uh, Youth Advisory um, Committee, which is uh, kids 13 to 21 who I meet with every couple of weeks to give feedback. Um, I'm seeing the department, my commanders, much more engaged with community meetings. Um, so there's been a lot of work, but the reality of it is there's so much, there's so much more work to be done, and it's going to take time. What we will be judged on is how we're performing. How are we performing, and when there is a misstep by an officer, are they being held accountable? And that's the part that I think that right now, you know, it's, it's just so important. And that's, I think that's where the department really got away from itself in the last uh, five or six years was the prior to my arrival was there just was not people were not being held accountable when they should have been well and you know with the difficulties around hiring now and officers you know once they hit retirement age they're getting out yes how concerned are you about the future of policing here in Louisville that has such a complicated relationship with policing right now and just the future of public safety here 
Well, I think to, you have to be, you have to come to it and understand the issues with, in hiring are not Louisville specific. It is across the country. And so I think it's really important to have that, be looking at that fairly and objectively because that's how you'll tackle it. I think that what I will say to you is this department, we've had to, we have had to change how we do business to ensure that we're tackling crime while we're short and over 300 officers. And in doing so, you know, you, we're not able to do everything I would like us to be able to do, but what I will still say to you is I'll go back to the violent crime is down 17%. We've had over 85, 80 indictments, federal indictments this year alone. Um, our gun seizures are up over 2,400. Um, our group violence intervention is fully rolled out. Um, so there are a lot of things that are in place that are really helping. Oh, and our homicide clearance rate when I came was like 32%. Now we're at about 50%, which is huge. So there's a lot of things in place that will, I feel strongly about that will help tamp down the crime. Um, but yes, the hiring is an issue nationally. Um, there's discussions on it conference calls weekly. Um, there isn't a, there's not a solution right now that's anyone's got something that, it, it's just, I just really think policing is going to have to rebrand itself. And in time, nationally, it will recover, but right now we just need to focus on what we can do here. Working with what you have. Yes. And, you know, you've kind of touched on this, but what do you think your biggest impacts have been here and what are your biggest regrets? Um, you know, for me, the, the most important thing is I can walk around this department now. I can see the officers with their heads held high. They're proud to be working here. They're proud to serve the community. They're understanding and responsive to doing business differently. Um, I am absolutely, that to me means everything. Um, for me, what I would say is a disappointment is not having the opportunity to push this further along. And I really just hope that as an outsider looking at this, I don't see that this city has slid back uh, backwards over the next couple of years. And what is next for you? Oh, I don't know. I'll, I'll let you read about it. <laughs> Going to keep that close to the <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Well, thank you for your time today. No, thank you. I really appreciate it. Thanks was, for the lighting. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And was there anything I didn't ask that you, you really wanted to say? No, I think for me the most important thing is that it's really, I've watched this narrative be, I've watched the department be really politicized to fit the speaking points of that somehow it's business as usual. And that is that is just wrong. And these the officers have done far too much work. This department has done far too much work for me to walk away from that and let that narrative be hanging out there. That's just, I, I, can, I can list out our successes at nauseum. And that's not to say we don't have more work to do, but it's to say, no, you can't just come in here and say you're gonna change this department and, and do things differently. And it, it's, it is being done differently. And that needs to be acknowledged. Yeah. Are you, concerned that that I know you've mentioned that you're concerned about a gap in leadership but are you concerned that the politicization it's going to either create unnecessary changes or stop the good work that is happening I think that's already occurred how so I've I've been asked to leave without any discussion about what work we've done I mean that was a decision that was made I mean that's if you have no idea what what is occurring internally and you've already come to that decision I would have to believe it's political. And that, again, is a mayor's prerogative. And I support that, which is why I'll, I'll step away. But I also will say it's not OK to just then start with broad strokes, say the department is, is doing business as usual. That is factually wrong. And I owe it to the men and women who have busted their tails for two years for me to speak up and say, no, time out. That's wrong. 